Physical examination of the lower spine and lower extremity. Physical examination of the spine will always follow the same pattern of any orthopedic examination. You will do an inspection, palpation, range of motion, and you will test the strength of key muscle groups. You will apply any specific test or provocative tests, and you will always do a thorough neurovascular examination. When you do an inspection, you will look for any obvious deformities, both in the coronal and in the sagittal plane. This is the coronal plane, and this is the sagittal plane. In the coronal plane, you will check for scoliosis and for pelvic obliquity. Check for sagittal alignment. The cervical spine in lordosis. The thoracic spine in kyphosis. And the lumbar spine in lordosis. Look quickly to the front and the back of the patient for any asymmetry in the body structures. Also look for skin and subcutaneous soft tissue lesions, such as cafe au lait spots of the neurofibromatosis. Look for hairy patches and dimples. Look for any surgical scars. Look for muscle atrophy. Check for calf muscle atrophy that will indicate L5-S1 weakness or neuropathy. Palpation. Palpation of the iliac crests. Palpation of the posterior superior iliac spines. Palpation of the spinous processes. Palpation of the sacrum. And then palpation of the greater trochanter and the ischial tuberosities. Palpate the soft tissue for any trigger points in the paravertebral muscles, in the gluteal muscles, in the piriformis, and try to palpate the sciatic nerve. Palpate the SI joints and palpate the sciatic notch. Then assessment of gait. Check for antalgic gait. It may indicate an arthritis of the hip. Check for Trindenberg gait. It may indicate weakness of the abductor muscle. Check for Tebbage gait. It may indicate foot drop or weakness of ankle dorsiflexion. Always ask the patient if the patient has staggering gait. Wide base and the staggering gait could indicate cervical myelopathy due to compression of the cervical spinal cord, which may coexist with lower spine problems. Check which movement causes pain for the patient and which movement is less painful to the patient. For example, in lumbar stenosis, extension of the spine causes pain, while flexion of the spine improves the condition. Also, in disc pathology, flexion of the spine causes pain. Pain originating from the disc will increase by sitting and leaning forward. This is the opposite of lumbar stenosis, Range of motion of the thoracolumbar spine, flexion 80 degrees. Measure the distance from the tip of the hands to the floor. Extension 40 degrees, lateral bending 40 degrees, rotation 45 degrees. The numbers could be variable. Neurological examination of individual nerve roots. You have sensory testing. Motor testing. We will be testing the muscles innervated by the nerves with roots from L2 to S1 as seen here in this diagram. 
reflexes and the special provocative tests and check if there's any Waddell signs or not. Sensory testing, we are supposed to test four areas. The pain by using a paper clip, light touch by using a cotton swab, and temperature and proprioception tested as needed as a focused testing. In practice, we usually test pain and light touch. The aim of the sensory testing is to identify if there is a dermatomal pattern of sensory dysfunction, which could suggest spinal root pathology or possible glove stocking distribution that can suggest a neuropathy. The pattern of sensory distribution in the lower extremity can be absent or it can be impaired or it can be normal. Sensory examination is seen in these illustrations. This is the area of sensation of the L2 nerve root. Sensory changes in L2 will be mid-anterior thigh. This is the area of sensation of the L3 nerve root. The sensation in L3 is the distal part of the thigh, including the knee area. The sensation of L4 is in the medial side of the leg, down to the medial side of the foot. The L5 nerve root sensation will be the dorsum of the foot and the leg. The S1 nerve root, the sensory is the lateral and plantar aspect of the foot. Motor testing. Hip flexion, it comes from the iliopsoas, L1, L2, and L3. Hip adduction is L2, L3, and L4. Knee extension is L2, L3, and L4. The L4 nerve root, we usually test the ankle dorsiflexion which is primarily the tibialis anterior. Ankle dorsiflexion can be L4 and L5 nerve roots. We can also test knee extension, which is also supplied by the L4 nerve root. Knee extension is predominantly L4 nerve root. The L5 motor will be hip abduction, the gluteus medius, but we commonly test extension of the big toe for L5 nerve root. In S1 motor, we use the ankle plantar flexion, the gastrosoleus complex. We'll be testing for the reflexes and there are only two reflexes in the lower extremity that are used, the patellar reflex and the Achilles tendon reflex. Provocative tests and the special tests. Provocative tests can help to differentiate spinal pathology from other musculoskeletal diseases. These are the provocative tests. Straight leg raise test, contralateral straight leg raise, femoral stretch test, straight leg raise test for L5 S1 nerve root irritation, contralateral straight leg raising test for sequestered desk in L5 S1 nerve root irritation, femoral stretch test for L3 L4 nerve root irritation. You can also test for ankle clonus and Babineski to rule out upper motor neuron lesion. Palbocavernosis reflex. Test for the presence of a spinal shock. A finger in the rectum and pulling the Foley catheter or squeezing a glance penis. A positive reflex occurs with anal sphincter contraction which means it is the end of the spinal shock.
that the patient is out of a spinal shock. You'll also have a sacroiliac joint test, like the Faber test. Faber test is a good test, but it is not a confirmatory test. A finger pointing at the sacroiliac joint posteriorly as the area of pain is as good as a Faber test. Usually, sacroiliac joint test is confirmed by injection of anesthetic material into the joint with positive response and relief of some of the pain. Check for the presence of Waddell signs. Waddell sign is non-organic physical exam findings. If three or more signs are found, then it could mean that the patient complaints may not be anatomical. The Waddell signs are controversial. The Waddell signs are meant to correlate with a non-organic low back pain, such as you may find a non-anatomic or inconsistent motor or system. Superficial and non-anatomic tenderness is not proportional to the exam findings. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.